We are two weeks away from the season finale, and this week's episode was a lot better. Hello everyone, Mega Man NG here, and I welcome you all to this week's Flash episode review. This week we're going to be talking about cause and effect. So here's how this is going to go now. I will be providing a summary, as well as what I liked and disliked about it. So look forward to how this is going to go. There's also going to be a little update at the end. So for anyone who's watching this, please make sure you stick around till the end because this is very important. Let us begin. Following last week's episode, Barry has learned that a future version of himself is Savitar. Knowing that he is one step or even two steps ahead, Sisko suggests that he fiddle with Barry's memories in the hopes of outwitting him. Unfortunately, this has a nasty side effect of causing Barry to forget who he is. As well as Savitar, who has also been affected. As it's a bit extreme, it forces Killer Frost to get involved as a means of a truce to get Barry's memories back. But when an arsonist threatens innocent lives, can they be able to get Barry's memories back and deal with his heat monger? Whereas last week's episode was a bit too dark and serious, this week was lighthearted and well done. I really enjoyed this episode considerably for a number of reasons. First and foremost, Barry Allen. Barry Allen in this episode loses his memories and throughout the entire episode he has to go around adjusting to this life but he seems a bit happy. He feels without any burdens. He feels like a different person without his memories. Though it makes it even better when he like, gains his speed powers and moves around in high speed. He never, feels, never felt so happy. And personally, I like this kind of Barry. I like this kind of Barry because he doesn't have to carry any burdens, any problems whatsoever. Just being hopeful, being happy, something that should have been him. But then eventually he would regain his memories and it wouldn't matter. He would still carry the burdens, but he's still Barry Allen. I really like this change and it really goes to show that the people behind it really had fun with this episode. They really did. However, even though there were some bits where Barry was happy, at times due to his loss of memories... It pretty much spelt disaster because it had to involve with the villain of the week, the heat monger. He's not really that relevant to begin with. He was more or less a plot device just to basically help Barry regain his memories and then eventually gets defeated. So heat monger wasn't really that important since he didn't do much throughout the episode. That's the only nitpick I felt. Not to mention, the episode also shows like the bonds between Barry and Iris continue to grow stronger. Especially when we now learn that on the night after Barry's mother died, Iris went and comforted him. Like, wow, that really surprised me. It was pretty, pretty emotional, pretty good, and it also cements some very good character development for Iris as well as Barry. These two, Barry and Iris, really do deserve each other. Now, I only hope things can end with a happy ending. There's also HR and Tracy. Tracy was tolerable this week. She didn't really do much, but I feel that HR and Tracy are building up some good chemistry. It really is, especially at, by the end of the episode's end. They revealed the Speed Force Bazooka, which hopefully can be able to take down Savitar. But who knows? But I do like the little bits with these two. It's kind of funny, and HR really was the funniest part of the episode next to Cisco. Seeing him interact with Tracy was just pretty interesting. Though it may went to full on love fest, and I'm like, really? They're rushing it already that much? I mean, come on. No, it takes time. But the fact is, with only two episodes left, who knows how this is going to go down. So it's not to say it's bad. I personally found it enjoyable. Now, now that we got most of the good stuff out of the way, it's time we talk about the other stuff that I felt was important. Savitar's origins. We now know that Savitar is in fact a future version of Barry Allen. And we also know why. Basically, he is actually a time remnant. An aberration. Pretty much someone that shouldn't exist. And you can't help but feel bad for this Barry because he was shunned by Team Flash after fighting against the future Savitar the first time around in the original timeline. Had Barry not intervened or rather, in this case, not intervening and creating Flashpoint. But finding out, seeing all this despair, pretty much motivated this time aberration to become Savitar in the first place and concocted this huge plan of setting up an endless cycle of defeat, rebirth, etc. 
it's crazy. When I saw Cisco plan it out, it was like an infinite loop. And that's nuts. Also, this episode ties very well into continuity. For example, when he mentioned the part when Barry created a time rend into the beat Zoom in the race of his life. If you have not seen that review, you need to check it out. And also, the four-part crossover invasion during the message on the on the ship when it mentioned don't trust Barry Allen. When they meant Barry Allen, they meant that Savitar. Wow. All those continuity nods. They really surprised me. They really did surprise me because at first I thought they weren't that important. But now after this, it now starts to make sense. Hence why Barry's message in 2056 was pretty understandable. Pretty understandable and pretty important too. Told that to Rip Hunter. It was in the Wave Rider. If you guys remember the crossover, right? We heard the whole message and now we finally know why. It was a pretty good episode and I love the continuity for it. Helps tie it together as well as the CW first. Man, I love these shows. I really love it big time. But you're also wondering what my rating is, right? I give this a solid 9 because this is way better than last week. It's a lighthearted episode, a lighthearted take, showing a different side of Barry Allen while also adding more character development, humor, especially with Cisco and HR and Tracy, and also tying into continuity as well as Savitar's origins. What can possibly go wrong? The episode is great. I loved it. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you do so. But next week gets even better. Ooh, I am so excited for the return of Leonard Snart, a.k.a. Captain Cold. And when that review comes, I'm going to be having a field day with this, believe me. I love this show a lot, and I really liked seeing Wentworth Miller. What makes it even better is that I look forward to playing Captain Cold in Injustice 2. So, this is going to be sweet. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this episode review. I hope you enjoyed it. Before I end it, I do want to say that for this little update, I did mention, you gotta stick till the end, is that, yeah, my playthrough of Fire Emblem Echoes is going to be on a bit of a hold for a while. It's not going to start on day one, but on my mid-month update, you will know why. Basically, they're not sending review copies, so I'm not angry. I'm just a bit disappointed. I will have to buy the game. It's just that you're not going to expect it for a while since, well, money's a problem. If anyone wants to help out with it, be my guest. I'm not going to force it on anybody. So yeah, it's going to be a delay. But tomorrow I will be starting Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. And it's going to keep going until Injustice 2. So look forward to that when it comes. Anyway, that is it for this episode review. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to hit the like button. It really, really does mean a lot to me. And I will see you guys next time for more. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out. Only two weeks till the end of season three. And when that happens, we're going full throttle.